Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws and welcome to the fifth video in this using Mojo in Monkey tutorial series. In this video we'll be covering all of the sounds and music functions that come with Mojo. And we'll be loading up a music file to play in the background of our little ship game and a sound to play when it explodes. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure your data folder is set up with the sounds you need. And so you can see in this case I have an explosion sound in mine and then two different versions of my background music uh, like with the images before this is all going to be provided in, in the link to this in the description and it's all free for use whatever you want to do with it I don't care all right. and so we'll go ahead and open up our project and the first thing we do is we're going to play our background music so to do that in our on create method we're just going to call play music and we'll just, this is actually going to load and then start playing a music file and in this case mine is called tiny world and I have it a couple different versions and now the reason I've got two different versions of the song in the in that data folder is because not all of the targets support all the different types of music encoding and so and not all browsers support them as well so you have to kind of figure out what's supported by all of them I found that at least AUG or AUG Vorbis and MP3 are supported by most so I do those two and in this case I'm using Chrome and it supports AUG Vorbis so I'm going to use that one and then what the other parameter with the play music function is, is either, either a zero if you want it to play once or a one if you want it to loop and I'm going to do one so this is just going to be looping throughout the whole game and then some things you can do with your music while it's playing you can pause it using the pause music function and you can resume it using the resume music function and then you can stop it using the stop music function I'm going to comment these out because I don't want them to actually be called and one thing you can do is you can check the state of your music while it's playing or while it's not playing so using the music state function what this returns is a zero if it's not playing anything a one if it is playing something and a negative one if it can't figure out either way if it can't even determine if you can even play music so and then finally you can set the music volume using the set music volume function and what this takes is a value is a float value from 0 to 1.0 and 0 being completely silent 0 0.5 being you know volume up halfway and then 1.0 is the maximum volume and I can go ahead and play this now I don't know how to actually loop the, th the music through cam studio so you have to trust me the music is playing right now and look our ship and now moving on to sound so what we're going to do first we're going to set up a field so we can load a sound so this is a little bit different you can actually play these sounds on different channels and stuff so you're actually going to have an instance of a sound object in this case I'm calling it explode sound and then in our on create you're going to assign it to load sound and inside the load sound you just do just like with an image you just do the path to the file inside the data directory in this case I just have explode.wave it's a wave file and now once I've done that there's several functions you can use to play this sound and do different things one being of course the play sound and what the play sound takes is the instance of the sound object and then the second parameter is the channel you want the sound to play on. So uh, in case you want it to be able to play you know, multiple sounds at the same time, they're going to play on different channels and just kind of mix together. So by default, it's 0, so that's the first channel. And then you, can go, you can go up to 31, but not all platforms support 32 sound channels. I found that the most stable number on most platforms is 8. Um, it'd be nice if they supported more, but that's that's what I came up with was eight. And it also takes the looping flag argument. So if you want it to play once, you can do zero, or if you want it to loop, you do one. And now once you got your channel playing a sound, you can do different things on the channel that sounds playing on, like pause it, and then you specify whichever channel, zero, one, whatever. 
then you can resume the channel after you've paused it like this and you can stop it all together and one thing I also do just like with the music state you can get the channel state so if, say we get the channel state of channel 1 and you get if it's not playing anything if it's stopped you're gonna get a 0 back if it is playing you're gonna get a 1 if it's paused you'll get a 2 back and then you'll get a negative one back if it can't be determined what's going on with this channel, if there's something wrong with the sound playing ability capabilities of your platform. And some other fun things you can do with the channel is you can set channel pan and specify the channel and then it takes another value from negative one to one and what this will do is if, you got, if you're on a stereo setup but you can pan all your sound to the left speaker or to the right speaker. So negative 1 would be all the way to the left speaker. You can say negative 0 0.5, so this would be part, like mostly to the left, but partially still on the right. If it's 0, it's going to be right in the dead middle, both speakers. And if you do a 1, it's going to be all the way to the right. And you can also set the channel rate. And what this will do is it'll set the speed of the sound playing, or in other words, change the pitch and this takes a value from negative or excuse me 0.5 to 2 and this if it's negative or I keep saying that if it's 0.5 then that's going to be one octave lower than original and if it's 2 it's going to be one octave higher and Finally, you can set your channel volume just like the music volume. You decide which channel you want, and then you go from 0 to 1 to set your music volume, either to silent or all the way up. Alright, so now let's put this explosion sound in action. So, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to create some more fields and what we're creating here is just the functionality to explode our ship and then play the sound and animate our little explode animation from before. So we're going to be rewriting some stuff from before but not too much. Okay. So right, get these down. Um, the explo explosion time. This is going to set the time of the actual when the explosion started. So our timed animation will start from the correct frame, the first frame, and then our explosion frame. That's the current frame of the animation. And then our explosion image. So we'll go down here, load in our image. And I don't want this video to go too too long, so I'm going to kind of go fast here. Explosion.png, and it's 128 by 128, 30 frames, and mid handle. And we'll go down here, and I'm going to explode our ship whenever we hit the space key. So we're going to do a key hit, then check for key space. And then we're going to set that explode me flag to true. That's going to tell it, hey, I'm exploding now. We're going to stop the ship. So our explosion doesn't move around. Then we're going to set the time that it exploded to the current milliseconds. And then finally, the best part, we're going to play our exploding explosion sound. So we're going to play sound, explosion sound, and then I'm just going to have it play on the first channel and not loop by default. So I can leave the rest of that off. And now we're going to say if it's exploding, let's update the frame to be the current milliseconds subtract the time that it started the explosion and we're going to divide by just like before the number of milliseconds we want each frame to be displayed and then mod the number of frames and then now we're going to go to our on render or say if it's exploding draw the explosion otherwise draw the ship. So now this is going to actually make this ship disappear and then draw our explosion image. So we do our explosion. We're going to have it explode where the ship was when the explosion happened and then we're going to give it the current frame of our explosion. And so this should work 
when we run it. And once again, you're going to have to trust me that the sounds are playing. So if you're playing along, you should get some sounds happening right about now. So it explodes, plays our little sound, you can see it's looping because the code's not the best. And you can also you can, you know, fly your explosion around, you know. So anyway, if you want to have some fun, you fix this up, make, do different things, put it in a star field, you know, cool stuff like that. And thanks for watching this one. The next video we're going to cover using the matrix with Mojo to make some of our drawing functionality a lot easier. And join me for that one. It's really important. Got to you got to learn the matrix. And so I'll see you in that one. And don't forget you can email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or leave comments down below. And I'll see you in the next one.